dates are probably one of the most important tools that you have for getting results in the dating game, in the pickup game, the seduction game, okay? What's up guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. Today's video is going to be about the two big mistakes that guys make on dates and how to fix them. Before we continue, please subscribe below if you have not already. Press notification bell for new notifications of videos every single day, all through 2021. Not stopping, can't stop, won't stop. Mixed in with lots of fun roasts and blasts and all this stuff. Best content in the niche and also fucking destroying all the piece of shit scammers which make up 99.9% .9 of the people that are coaching this stuff. Uh, also if you want to get very very good very fast I can explain to you how I can teach you my entire system across an eight-week mentorship which includes includes 32 calls okay four calls a week times eight weeks jump on a free 30-minute call I'll go over all the details of that and show you how I can make you very good at the game very fast okay so what are the two biggest mistakes that I see happen with guys running their dates. Before I tell you what those are, I want to first stress the importance of dates. Dates are probably one of the most important tools that you have for getting results in the dating game, in the pickup game, the seduction game, okay? Why is that? When you cold approach a girl out in public, on the street or at a club, lots of times she's gonna be with her friends or she's gonna have things to do and there's gonna be all these things working against you, okay? Like in a nightclub, you're gonna have to win over all the friends or these get her away from the friends, but you're gonna have to get her to leave the venue, deal with you know, all this stuff she might have to do afterwards, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of extra things against you. On a date, you have perfect logistics. You're one-on-one, -on -one. there's no friends to cock block things, you're right near your house, she doesn't have anything to do afterwards, okay? And it, there's no distractions. You're sitting there for like 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes, okay? The sweet spot being about an hour and actually getting to know each other and building a connection. Okay, so dates, setting, mass setting dates and then getting good at running your dates is going to be the key to getting a lot of results, okay? And you have to be able to acquire enough leads and then text properly in order to get the dates set up, but then you have to be able to run the dates properly, okay? Someone that has a whole bunch of dates that is poor at running their dates is going to have a bottleneck at that part of the funnel is not going to get very many results because it's going to be closing up from them consistently messing up their dates. Okay, so the two big things that guys are messing up on their dates, number one, is they're not sexualizing enough. So what happens there is they end up in the friend zone. The girl sees them too platonically. They're, they're too afraid to, or they just don't know in general that they should be doing that. But a lot of guys are just too afraid to make the sexual joke. They think it's too high risk. What if the girl gets offended? What if, what if it doesn't go over well, et cetera, et cetera. Or they try to make it some big move. Okay, I'm gonna make the sexual joke now, but it comes off as like forced and awkward or just canned or something like this. The problem is, let me tell you the very real problem. If you are too platonic on your dates, you are going to get friend zoned, okay? And this can come in all shapes and sizes. You're gonna hear things like, sorry, I just didn't feel the chemistry. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna work out. Oh, you're a nice guy, but I don't see this going anywhere. You're, I'm sure a lot of you watch that. If you've gone on dates, have heard things like this. Most of the time, it's due to the fact that you didn't sexualize, okay? You didn't sexualize enough. You need to make it apparent that you are interested in her as more than just friends, okay? And she wants you to be the man and lead and make those kinds of sexual jokes do some light physicality so that that's what you're doing when you're flirting, okay? Then she's gonna get a sexual attraction for you. So that's problem number one. Problem number two, guys don't set it up properly for the girl to come back home with them after. So they're not framing things properly so that you guys will be going back to your place afterwards. Or if you don't have your own place, which some of you don't, you need to frame things to be able to go back to her place after, okay? It doesn't work like, like this where you just get to the end of the date and then she's like, okay, like let's go to your bed right she's gonna say well it was nice meeting you like take care right and most of the time guys aren't doing either one so should they get friend zoned and they get like oh, it was nice to meet you you know i don't think this is gonna happen anymore and she goes her her own separate way so what you need to be doing is properly bringing up that you guys should be going home together okay and there's a specific way to do that and there's a specific time of the day to do that. There's a, there's a kind of a key point where you should be doing it at. You wanna be doing it when things are quote unquote on, okay? When, and it, it shouldn't be too late in the day because if you do it too late in the date that you suggest you guys should hang out after, number one, you don't have time to answer her objections. Number two, you don't have time to, um, you know, like deal with, like she's already mentally committed to going and doing something else, 
Okay, I'll put it that way. So, so she's thinking like, okay, I'm gonna go to my car after this. I'm gonna go to the gym or I'm gonna go see this friend or go do this activity. Or she's already thinking about calling her Uber and she's already mentally committed to going and doing something else so that when you bring it up late in the date, again, you don't have time to answer her objections, but you also don't, it's you're fighting an uphill battle now because she's already committed to doing something else. I've heard client stories where, uh, and I used to do this way back in the day, they're bringing it up like, okay, you guys had your drink or coffee, now you're still scared to bring it up that you should go back to your house. You get outside the venue, and she's like, all right, well, my car's this way. And you're like, well, why don't you, why don't you come to my place? She's like, oh, no, I have these things to do. Now you look desperate. Now you're, you're like shooting your value into the ground. And you're like, well, just come. It's like kind of this like try hard force thing at the last minute where you're like, well, no, it'll be fine. Like, let's just go for a little bit. No, really, my car's just over here. I don't know, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you don't have time to properly deal with her objections like you would when you're casually and calmly sitting at the coffee or the drink, okay, at the, at the table in the venue. So you need to bring it up at the right time. And then there's gonna be objections that come up almost every time. Just like when you try to take a girl in for a nightclub, there's 14 major objections that come up and I train you on the optimal responses to each one in my product, Occam's Razor, and also in the eight-week mentorship program. Okay, and again, with the, I'm not gonna go into the full details of exactly how you frame it for her to come back to your house. I'm not gonna go over the full details of how you answer the objections, but the objections are gonna come in the form of safety objection, where she says, oh, what if you're a murderer? What if you're a serial killer? How do I know I can trust you? Or they're gonna come in the form of a hookup objection. Oh, I'm not that kind of girl. I don't do that on the first date or this or that, okay? Which just stems from the fact that society tells her if she goes home too early with a stranger, she's going to be slut shamed, okay? You might see her as a slut. She might see herself as a slut. Uh, people that she knows, that knows that she went home early with you are gonna see her as a slut, etc. So instead, you have to give her what's called plausible deniability. So you have to say, I have like three different key phrases. I'm not gonna go into them in the video on the YouTube. But there's three different types of things you can say. They're gonna put those sexual and hookup objections to rest. There's key things you can do and say when she brings up the safety objections. And then when you solve those problems, she will go with you and then most likely hook up with you, okay? So I hope that was helpful. If you want to learn those exact methods and exact phrases, check out Occam's Razor. The link is in the description. Also check out uh, my eight-week mentorship program. You can get on a free 30-minute call with me. I'll show you how I can get you very, very good at this very fast, okay? Like, comment, share, subscribe if you have not already, notification bell, and I will see you guys on the next video. Thank you. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome. Some of us are active while others just let their mouth run. No doubt, son, this is not just about fun. We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum.